Hello everyone, this is Brad Wistens, and this video is going to be part one of the Advanced Orbital Mechanics tutorial. If you haven't seen the introduction yet, please check out the link in the description. This video is going to be relatively short compared to the rest of the series. In it, I want to go over how to do orbital maneuvers with extremely low thrust to weight ratio. Ever since I've been playing this game, I've seen people go on Reddit and ask how much TWR they need as a bare minimum once they reach space. All the answers I've seen that have attempted to provide an actual number have all been way too high. In a recent video, I was able to return from Eve to Kerbin with a TWR of only about 5 one thousandths or about 5 hundredths of a meter per second squared. That particular maneuver resulted from an unusual challenge and required an extremely long time, so in this video I'm going to demonstrate some techniques to use what I consider a reasonable amount of TWR. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a transfer from low Kerbin orbit to EVE rendezvous with a TWR of 0.14. This is a great TWR to aim for for an LVN-powered spacecraft and provides a good compromise between absolute efficiency and convenience. This will also allow me to demonstrate why minimizing TWR is a useful thing to do. This plane is extremely simple, is single stage, uses no aerodynamic tricks, but is still able to reach low Kerbin orbit with almost 4,500 meters per second of delta V remaining. Key to this performance is minimizing dry mass. Dry mass is extremely expensive in terms of delta V and engines are one of the worst sources of this dry mass. The lower TWR in orbit that we aim for, the more fractional mass we're going to have available for fuel and the higher our delta V is going to be. The standard transfer from low Kerbin orbit to EVE in a good transfer window is going to be a little over 1,000 meters per second. At our TWR, this is going to take around 16 minutes, which is more than half of an orbit of Kerbin, so obviously we aren't going to be able to do all of this in a single burn. The solution is to split this maneuver into multiple burns. Some of you may have already done techniques such as this, but I still think it might be useful for you guys to see the techniques I use to plan this out. The first step is to place your maneuver node for the ejection just like you normally would, but to make sure it's at least 10 days out. In this video, I've made it 20 days out just to make sure we have enough time to work with. The next step is to decide how many different burns you want to separate this maneuver into. The smaller each burn is, the more efficient the maneuver is going to be. So this is really a matter of deciding how much time you want to spend with this and how much efficiency you're trying to wring out. For this TWR, I'm going to split the maneuver into eight burns, which will take about two minutes each. Feel free to use less or more depending on how much TWR you have, how much time you actually want to spend doing this maneuver, and how important the last couple drops of efficiency are. When we divide this burn into parts, it's important that we remember both the prograde component and the normal component. If we just do prograde burns up until our final ejection and then do the entire normal component then, it's a simple geometric fact that we're going to end up using more delta V overall than if we did the normal component with each subburn. To start this process, I'm going to create an exact duplicate of our normally plotted maneuver node at the same place of the orbit with the same magnitudes of prograde and normal, but on the immediate orbit of Kerbin. Don't get rid of our normally plotted maneuver node yet. We're going to use that for planning purposes later. I'm then going to perform the maneuver just like normal, but I'm only going to do one eighth of it. I'm then going to perform the maneuver just like normal, but I'm only going to do one eighth of it. After completing the first burn, I'm going to move my maneuver node one orbit forward so it will again be in the future. This resets the amount of delta V that the game thinks we want to do, but we're not worried about the magnitude. As long as the direction of the maneuver is correct, it'll still allow us to see which direction we should be burning our engines in. After completing the second burn, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to move our maneuver node one orbit forward, and we're going to repeat this for the first six burns of this maneuver. When we get to burn seven, we need to stop and think, because this is where we're going to make sure the timing of our final ejection is correct. To start with, I set a maneuver node at the periapsis, which is the penultimate pass of Kerbin, to about one eighth of the overall maneuver. I then go and find and see where my final maneuver node is. And remember, I didn't change the timing on this final maneuver node, so the second maneuver at this point is exactly the timing that we want to eject from Kerbin at. I then can adjust the magnitude 
of the previous burn until I'm going to be at my Kerbin periapsis at the precise time that we wanted to eject from Kerbin. The transfer window has some leeway here, so it doesn't need to be exact. We can always move this final maneuver a little bit. We just want to get it close. One thing to watch out for here is undesired close passes of the moon. This will totally throw off our planning if you don't watch out for it. So check that all of our orbits of Kerbin in between the 7th and 8th burn aren't going anywhere near the moon, and if they are, you're going to want to adjust the magnitude of the 7th burn to either add or subtract one orbit of Kerbin in between the burns until you don't have any close passes in the moon. Unlike the previous burns, the magnitude of the 7th burn is critical because we carefully planned the timing of this here, so make sure we don't overshoot or undershoot the maneuver. If you've done everything properly, the final burn should be a small burn at periapsis of our highly elliptical Kerbin orbit that'll throw us all the way to EVE. There's always going to be some inaccuracy here, so you may have to move your maneuver node a little bit off of periapsis. You lose a little bit of delta V by doing so, so it is important to try to make everything as accurate as possible. If you have to move it too far off, it might be worth going back and seeing if you can do things a little more precisely. Planning for a correction burn halfway between Kerbin and Eve may also help here with any imprecision. With that, we've successfully completed a low TWR transfer from Kerbin to Eve. Much lower TWR is possible with this technique. You can just separate the maneuver into more burns. If you want to get your TWR even lower, there are some additional techniques that allow us to do that. That might be featured in videos that are to come in this series. The next video in this series is going to be how to use a gravity assist off of Eve to reach MOHO efficiently. So look forward to seeing you guys in that one and thank you for watching.